Hi folks, this is uh, Tom, your frugal prepper. Um, I just wanted to kind of create a video response here uh, to some of the uh, to, to a video um, about using a microwave as a Faraday cage, and, and it's really interesting because I've just started looking at what some other people do for Faraday cages. Um, some of the misconceptions that are out there, and folks, this is really it's just physics you know it's the laws of science so um, I mean I'm not a scientist or a professional person but I'm a ham radio operator and one of the things that uh, everyone's fascinated me is I, I I'm not into like HF rigs and talking across the world and stuff really at all um, but I have always been fascinated from the UHF spectrum on up. I mean, you know, anything that's 440 megahertz on up is what I love to read about and research and learn about. I love uh, microwave communications, 10 gigahertz stuff. Just um, that's just me. Short wave, or, or not short wave, short range, uh, point to point communications is just what's always fascinated me. Um, so some things that you have to know about using a microwave as a Faraday cage. Number one is it's probably a bad idea and it's not going to work. There's two reasons for this. Electromagnetic pulse is going to have RF all over the spectrum. Right? Especially if it's from a nuclear device which really it's always from a nuclear device because guess what the sun's nuclear. Um, it's going to have things from gamma rays all the way through the whole spectrum that are going to be resonating on any different lengths of wire and creating all kinds of havoc on the electrical grid and with your electronics. Um, so a lot of people say, hey, a microwave is a perfectly sealed uh, uh, cage because it doesn't leak any microwaves. Well, microwaves happen at 2.4 gigahertz. They operate in the ISM band at 2.4 gigahertz. It's the same frequency that your wireless operates on, like Wi-Fi. Um, well, except for the newer versions of Wi-Fi are up in the 5 gigahertz band. So like the dot .ns. Like dot .n uses both. Sometimes it can use only one, but that's not a really established, well-established standard. As the, you know, it's still a uh, uh, it still hasn't been officially approved as to what the standard are, but some wireless end can talk on 5 gigahertz only, some talks on 2.4 and 5, some can talk on 2.4 only, but like your, your A211, B, G, that stuff's all 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, baby monitors, cordless phones, all kinds of things operate in that band, but they operate at a little tiny fraction of power. Your microwave, say it's got you know a thousand watts coming out of the magnetron. Now, the microwaves work because 2.4 gigahertz, that that frequency right there, is the exact frequency that will vibrate isometric molecules. Isometric molecules, the most popular one, is uh, H2O, water. So any moisture, it vibrates it. And the more power you pump into it to vibrate it, means it heats up that much faster. So that's what makes your food get warm: is the water. The water molecules are vibrating inside of it, and it heats it up. Um, this is why, if you take something that doesn't have like any water content in it, like margarine, unless you put margarine on something in the microwave. I mean, just put a pat of mar margarine. Like the cheapy margarine, like the imperial margarine, um, or like oil, um, probably some Crisco, stuff like that, that doesn't have hardly any moisture or no moisture in it, it won't heat up in the microwave. Um, so, okay, now microwaves have these little holes in the front of them at, that you can see through the door. Well, those little holes stop 2.4 gigahertz frequencies from coming through. So if it'll stop 2.4 gigahertz, it'll stop anything lower than that. It'll stop, you know, uh, anything in the 8, 900 megahertz range, the 1.2 gigahertz range. It'll stop 
anything on down to DC with zero hertz okay from coming through that piece of screen in the front of your microwave and the same with any of the parts of your microwave that are all metal the back the front the top it stops them dead now that still would be bad even if you could stop all frequencies in a microwave below 2.4 gigahertz which there's a reason that you can't on most microwaves it would still be bad because you're going to have from 2.4 gigahertz on up the gamma radiation still able to get through which is going to be a significantly big chunk of the EMP so you could still get stuff fried um, but let's say for the sake that it was a special EMP that was only 2.4 gigahertz and lower and people put in cell phones in their microwave or, or, or an FRS radio and they transmit like I can hear it my microwave's bad I'm gonna throw it away because it's leaking radiation and I know so because I got another microwave and it doesn't work in there so that microwave's good well there's two principles that microwaves work off of really well built microwaves will usually use both principles so um, the second principle that's that's at play here is that a microwave is a tuned cavity um, or can be a tuned cavity okay so if you have a tuned cavity in this essence a waveguide um, a, a perfectly a box that's perfectly tuned to the wavelength of that frequency um, you can take one side off of it and that frequency cannot escape from it because it's tuned to that frequency so in theory you know don't do this because it probably won't work because it's not going to be perfectly tuned but you could rip the door off of the front of your microwave and since it's a tuned cavity no RF can leak from it so a lot of your microwave manufacturers have taken two approaches and some have done both and one approach is we're going to make it a perfectly tuned cavity and then on one side since it's perfectly tuned we can put in a light we can put in all this other, anything that we need to protrude through the light um, and maybe even where the magnetron connects won't be perfectly connected as long as the gaps smaller than 2.4 gigahertz can get through there can be a gap there um, and so it's not that that side can be open essentially and no radiation can leak so they still use the screen on the front to make that virtually a side at 2.4 gigahertz then they also make the, the dimensions of the microwave so that it's exactly tuned to 2.4 gigahertz and the radiation can't leak even though there's an opening on the side now some microwaves you'll see that they have a, the little holes over where the lights go at and that's because they're maintaining that and they're keeping the the RF blocked and then the, the microwave may not be a perfectly tuned cavity but it can, but the microwave radiation can't get out okay and microwaves that are designed on to be a perfectly tuned cavity don't handle putting aluminum foil in them well at all microwaves that are designed more on the we're just going to make it a sealed cavity they can't leak 2.4 gigahertz seem to handle things like aluminum foil in them really well and also if you put aluminum foil around something and completely enclose it it'll also be fine because the um, at that point it becomes uh, there's no edges it becomes like a, a mini Faraday cage so there's no edges for the radiation the radio signals to bounce back off of and you won't get those little lightning bolts um, but so there's two things that work there so just because you put your cell phone in your microwave and you could still call it does not mean your microwaves leaking radiation and and even then it's electromagnetic radiation so unless it's hundreds of watts it's not really going to hurt you um, and you know you're going to have to be pretty close to it and right in the path of it and and they're, it's not going to leak that much um, so you know you can stop throwing your microwaves away because your cell phones work in them <laughs> um, because there's two frequencies one there's two two things that work one is the sides have to be made that are tuned that are going to be a solid side so that they won't block 
where they won't pass anything 2.4 gigahertz or below. But then the other frequency is that the other philosophy is that it's a tuned cavity, so there can be holes in one side of it that will pass every other radio frequency perfectly fine except for that exact 2.4 gigahertz frequency that's coming out of the magnetron. Um, and some microwaves employ both those technologies, some microwaves employ one or the other, um, and all they have to do is make sure that when it's all said and done, they measure it and there's an acceptable amount of radiation that can leak from it. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's probably like 100 milliwatts or something like that. Um, an acceptable amount of RF could be leaked from it. Um, as long as it meets those guidelines, then it's safe, it's fine. And it probably leaks less power than your Wi-Fi access point puts out. Um, so that's just a real quick description of what's going on here. You know, it, it's science, it's physics, there's there's no magic involved here. Um, you know, I'm not going to start whipping out mathematical formulas and drawing on a whiteboard. But, you know, if you do a little bit of reading, you'll find out that, you know, these are all just straight up proven scientific principles that we've known about for a very, very long time. Thanks. This is Tom, your frugal prepper.